Say it again. When I pray in other tongues, God is setting me up for a future of prosperity. And my future starts now. One Corinthians chapter 14, we have been talking about the power of praying in the Spirit. The power of praying in the Spirit. Now in these days that we've been experiencing, so often people will look at a situation and say, I don't know what more to do. What more can come? How, how, how are we going to handle this? How do we deal with the situation? It seems like it's beyond even something that's possible for man to ever bring into control. And here's the thing. The things that are impossible to man are possible with God. Now, Pastor Alan, I've prayed every way that I know to pray, and I still don't know. It just seems like, you know, what more do we do? Well, here's the thing. The Holy Spirit has been given to us. And Jesus said that even when he went, he said that he would give us and he would send the Holy Spirit, and he would not only be with us, he would live within us. And he said that he would remind us of what we've been taught, that he would guide us into the truth, the word of God, and he would show us things to come, reveal to us our future. Paul said it this way when he said, we don't know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. And that intercession is what's so important is that when we pray not by our own minds or our own thoughts, but we're able to pray what God says, we will get the perfect prayer prayed. And that's why he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, then what am I to do? This is from the Amplified Version. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, and that's by the Holy Spirit within me. And I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. So there is a place that we do need to understand. I know that, for example, if I'm trusting God for a job, I want to make sure that it's the right job. But once God's released to my, in my heart the peace that this is the job for me, then I can say, Father, I thank you. I received my job. I've done that. I prayed that in English, and I understand what I've prayed. But what mechanism is necessary? Who needs to approve that? Uh, who, what do I need to say at the right time? Well, you know, how's it going to happen for that to come to pass? Well, I'm going to have to pray some things that I don't know. I don't, maybe I don't even know the company that I need to go to. I don't know. I need to see that advert. Well, how am I ever going to see the advert for that job? How am I ever going to find out about it? You see, there's so many variables. Maybe God says, I want you to plant a church as he did to Janine and me uh, many years ago. And he said, I want you to go to Cape Town. And plant a church. And so we were sent by God to go and do, to come and do this work. Now, he just said, when I, when I first heard it, I just sensed Cape Town. You see, I'd been born in Cape Town, raised in Cape Town, went to school. And then I moved to Johannesburg when I met Janine. And we got married and I was working up there. And so when God said, go back and I want you to go and plant a church, for me, it's huge. I mean, you know, from Cape Town City all the way through, you know, the whole Cape region. Where do you go? Who do you go to? Where? What building? Uh, you know, there's so many variables that you have to know. I don't know everything. I just have the, the target. And so what happens is I pray that in English. Father, I thank you. I receive it. I've heard your call. We are planting a church. I believe I know where it is, even though my mind doesn't yet know. I believe I know what we need to do, even though I don't have the plan laid down in front of me. I believe I have every finance and need fully supplied, even though there was nothing in our bank to show. And so there's, there's so many, all these variables that we don't know. But praise God, the Holy Spirit does. He knew exactly where we need to be. He knew when it was going to be. He knew who was going to be there. He knew who was going to partner with us to make it happen. He knew all of that. So how do we pray it? I let him do the praying. And so instead of relying just on my intelligence, my mind and my understanding, I prayed with my spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me. Janine and I would pray in tongues many, 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 many hours. Just spend praying and praying and praying and praying. And by that way, we could birth God's perfect plan.
You see, when you pray in other tongues, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, it says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, I've already covered quite a lot of information. This is already part four, I believe it is. And so we have already looked at uh, the difference between the gifts of speaking in other tongues, uh, different kinds of tongues. We've looked at what praying in tongues is. And so if you missed that, and this is the first time that you may be listening to this, you say, how can you say that praying in tongues is, is just prayer or praying? Do we, is the church supposed to pray in tongues today? Is that still a gift today? If any of those questions come up, please, I really want to encourage you to go and listen to part one, two, and three. I don't have time to cover that every time we teach because now I want to get into the reason for it, the purpose for it. And so we understand it says, you speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. And that's what we're talking about. This type of tongues is pr a prayer language for no one understands him. So this is no earthly language. This is not a case of being in some home language or in foreign country language, because yet it says no one understands. And also, however, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. These are the mysteries that we're talking about, the mystery of when I need to do something, who am I going to marry, what's my next job, do I invest or don't I? But God reveals those mysteries as we pray in other tongues. Hallelujah. And so last week, we began having a look at the reasons for praying in the Spirit. And so number one, we had a first look at it was God can arrange deliverance, protection, or provision for you or someone you pray for. God can arrange deliverance, protection, and provision for you or someone you pray for. As I said, when we were planting this church, we needed the plans. We needed to know where it was, who was going to be a part of it, the finances that we needed to get it up and running. Uh, all of those things. But as we prayed in the Spirit, as we prayed in tongues, gradually we became aware of it. It became new to us, but we became aware. So as we prayed, the Lord led us that we would plant the church in Somerset West. And that was revealed through situations, through us being here, by Him Spirit leading us, by confirmation through somebody else requesting, by a pastor confirming it, slowly that became more and more manifest. And then when we came down, the building that we were going to be in, God told us where it was going to be, told Janine it would be a building that a church is already in. You know, I mean, you know, which building is that? We went and searched Somerset West and looked like all the churches were using their buildings. But praise God, He led us to the right building. And it was revealed. And then what about the provision? We just we sold our house and all the proceeds from our sale, we put all of that into the ministry. Well, that was going to sustain the church. It would get us up and running, but it wasn't going to sustain it. We couldn't keep running the church forever just on our finances. We needed partners. But God, by us praying in tongues, brought those partners together. And together we made sure that it worked. And today, here we are so many years later, and God's still doing it. And we're still praying in tongues. And we still continue to pray because there's still more to do and more churches to plant and more outreaches to do. And so what's, where's the next church going? God already knows, but I'm going to pray. And as we pray together, we birth these things and we pray out God's perfect plan. Hallelujah. Family, I really want to encourage you. If you're ever in a place where you reach a point of confusion and you think, what next? Don't sit there worrying and trying to figure it out in your head. Your head can only think so far. How many of you notice that? I mean, you try and work out how you're going to pay for something, for example. Uh, you can say, okay, I've got this money in this investment. I've got this money in this bank account. And I've got this money. Over. If I sell that, I can pull this together. And it still doesn't make enough. Well, what if I go and get a job? Then maybe I get this. And you notice what's happening? You're almost wheel spinning because you're doing those sums over and over and over and retracing and thinking if I do this and if I move that. And you're still coming up short. But here's the good news. God supplies every need. He's not mocked. Have you ever sown a seed? There's a harvest on that seed. Have you ever tithed? The windows of heaven are open above you. And God pours out a blessing and provision. Well, where's it going to come from, Pastor Allen? 
That's the point. Get into the presence of God and begin to pray in other tongues. You pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. For how long? You pray. How long, Pastor? Pray. Pray long. <laughs> how long is pray long? Pray long is as until you know in your heart it's done. That's it. That's it. I, uh, in other words, if you're still asking how long I need to pray, then you haven't got your answer yet. But when you've prayed long enough and you know, you will know, bam, there's the answer. There'll be a release in your spirit. And no one has to say you should be praying longer. No, I've got the answer. Hallelujah. I've got the answer. There's a peace that happens. And then what happens is God begins to reveal it. So all of a sudden, you think you're just out meeting somebody for coffee, and you just think you're just going out for a nice day to catch up with a friend, and all of a sudden, there's somebody sitting at the table on the other side, and they have an idea for you. And next moment, you know, three weeks later, you're a multimillionaire. Just one meeting away. How did that happen? Well, you were praying, and God set it up. God set it up. Say that. When I pray in tongues, God sets up my future for me to prosper. Did you hear that? Say it again. When I pray in other tongues, God is setting me up for a future of prosperity. And my future starts now. <laughs> Amen. Family of God, I don't know why anybody would argue why I don't know whether I should be praying in tongues. When I heard this, I can't get enough of praying in tongues. I won't let a day go past without me praying in tongues. Why? Because I've got a tomorrow that's going to arrive to be today. And when it's today, I need everything set up for that day to be successful. And that's going to happen when you pray in other tongues. Another very important reason, number two. Now, these aren't in any particular sequence. It's just points that really I want to use to encourage us to desire to pray in tongues more than ever before. So if it's not just for God to make sure you or a family member succeed or a friend or whatever, number two, God draws people we know to Christ. God draws people to Christ. How many of you got a family member, an uncle or a granny or, or a friend maybe or someone, a colleague at work that you know you want, you so much want them to know Jesus the way you do? You want them to come to know Jesus. And maybe you've even presented the gospel. Maybe you've invited them to church and uh, maybe you've tried to get them involved. Read this, listen to this message. Maybe you've passed on one of my messages and say, you're going to really enjoy this teaching. And then you ask, have you listened to it? They go, no, not yet. And, and you, you know, I know what it's like. We've been through that. And you invite them to church. No, one day maybe I'll come with you, but not at the moment. You know, but we, we know they need to give their life to Jesus. So you've done everything you know in the natural. You've done the inviting. You've given the messages. You've, done, you've told them. You've me. So what now? So John chapter 6, verse 44. Look at John chapter 6, verse 44. Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. No one, that's John chapter 6, verse 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. Isn't that interesting? That's why, you know, when people say, ah, you know, I was this and I was that, a drug addict or an alcoholic, whatever, and then I found God. You've heard me say it before, God was never lost. Now, I know what you're saying. I do understand that. I know that it seems like, you know, all of a sudden I discovered religion or I discovered God or I discovered church, whatever. No, somebody you love was praying for you. Someone that loves you. Someone that loves you was praying for you. And that praying for you is where God, because of that intercession, drew you into him. See, we don't find God. He found us. And the only reason you or I came to know him as Lord and Savior is because he drew us into him. Hallelujah. See, family of God, how many you realize that most people, if not all, don't go out looking for God 
unless God draws them. And here's the thing. God only draws people to Him as Christians pray. See, when the church prays, she gives birth to new Christians. When the church prays, she gives birth to new Christians. Listen to Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah 66 verse 8. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Now we know when Isaiah prophesied this, he, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, but he thought, because I don't know what he was thinking at the time, I can only imagine, but he was speaking to Israel at the time. If we would intercede, if we would pray, then God will give birth to the nation of Israel. Israel would grow. But family God, we understand that since Jesus has come through understanding and revelation of prophetical language, that Zion was a type of the church. We talk about types and shadows. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And so as the New Testament manifests and shows up and we play out in the New Testament, it's revealing the prophecies that were hidden in the Old Covenant. And so when we talk about Zion, there was a very real Israel and, for example, a very real Egypt. But when Israel came out of Egypt, went through a desert, a wilderness, into a promised land, that is a type of the church coming out of slavery and bondage through Jesus paying the price through death and resurrection. And once you've been through that death and resurrection, that wilderness, you enter into the promised land. Your salvation. Hallelujah. We as the church are going to continue praying as we have never prayed before. And we're going to see more salvations than we've ever seen before. Why? Because together as a church, we travail and we give birth to the children of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hand and say, today I heard the word of God That word brought faith to my heart. I am a believer. I'm not a doubter. As a hearer of God's word, I'm also a doer. And today, I choose to put into action what I've heard. I pray in tongues. Every day, I intercede for new believers, for new Christians, for Christians to be born, born into the kingdom of God, I am the church of God that travails and gives birth to the children of God. As I pray, people are saved. As I pray, God draws people to Himself. And they come to know Him as their Father and are born again, children of God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, rejoice. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Well, my dad would like to share something with you relating to hearing the voice of God and partnership. So please enjoy. As you know, Friday is our giving day here at Allenbag Ministries. And if you've been touched by this ministry and you want to be a part of sowing your seed, I have a right to pray over you, just as Paul did here in Philippians. Let's read it once again. Philippians 4 verse 19, he says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How could he pray that prayer? Because he starts in verse 19 with and. Well, what does and mean? It means that in the beginning, he says yeah, in verse 16, Even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. And he says, yeah, I'm not seeking the gift. You see, whenever we do an offering like this, it's not us chasing for money because I know God looks after our needs. I've never had to beg. I've never had to ask people to do it. But I do want people to know what happens when they do it. And so I'm not going to sit up here and say, please, please, you got to give. If you don't, we're going to have to close the ministry. We don't have to do that. You have sent aid. People have done that. They've sent. They said, listen, we want this gospel preached. We want to sow into it. And because of that, I don't have to talk to you about looking for a gift or, or seeking, seeking the gift. He says, I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. There is a harvest due. 
And I need to tell you about it, otherwise you wouldn't know about it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And he says, yeah, he received everything. It's a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And because it pleases God, is done in faith. As a result, my God shall supply all your need. And that's why we have this time on a Friday where I can share the knowledge that because of your giving into this ministry, we're able to reach so much further. So many lives are transformed and changed. I want to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you for generously giving. The Lord's moving in your heart today to give. The details are on the screen. You can go onto our website. It's just a few clicks away and you can sow into this ministry. And I want you to know because of that, we can continue to do the work and keep preaching the gospel. And there is a reward due to you. We each have our part and we receive equal part. And that is what partnership is about. So let me pray this partnership prayer over you right now. Father, I thank you for my dear partners and friends that are sowing today. And according to your word, you do supply all they need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. According to the promise of your word, as we continue to preach this gospel, the grace that is in our life manifests in their life. I thank you that the flow of anointing manifests in their life, that their every need is always supplied. And we give you praise and honor for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we believe that prayer is answered. And please let me know your testimonies when it does take place. To get involved, you can go to our website, allenbackministries.org, and there you will find many easy-to-use giving facilities. And I encourage you, partner with us and get involved with what God is doing here. offering you opportunities to prosper, to be blessed, and change your life forever. Prayer is such a powerful gift from God, yet it's been so misunderstood in the body of Christ. In this series, Alan Back delves into some of the types of prayer, but really gets specifically into the power of praying in the Spirit. Why is it so important? Why is it so necessary to have in our lives? In the series, Alan Back teaches on the power of praying in our personal prayer language and shares how praying in the Spirit can benefit your life as well as the lives of others in amazing ways. How do you understand if you take everything that I've taught there and apply that in your life, you're going to love a powerful Christian life. Visit us online to get hold of your series or contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries offices. Get hold of your series and step into the power that comes with praying in the Spirit. Well, praise God, what a powerful message. You know, God speaks in a still, small voice. And in order to hear that still, small voice, He has to be invited into your heart so that He lives inside of you, so that you can hear the voice of God. And today I want to give you an invitation to give your life to Jesus, to make Him your Lord and your Savior so that you can begin hearing the voice of God. If that's you and you're watching this program and you're saying, today I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to live for God. So what I want you to do is say this prayer out loud with me now. Say this, thank you, Jesus. Today, I choose you. I choose to live for you. I give my life to you. Thank you for dying for me and that you rose again from the dead. And today, I invite you into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Congratulations, you are now born again. 
but you may have questions. What does that mean for me now? What are my next steps? And we have some things that we would like to get into your hands. So what you can do is go to allenbagministries.org, click the Start Your Journey tab, and there will be many reading materials that will help you build your faith and help you in your walk with God. Now this series is so critical for a believer to listen to and to hear over and over. Why? Because we need to know how to hear and recognize the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God will help me marry the right person, will help me get the right job, make correct financial decisions, help me raise my kids, and just help me in my day-to-day -day life every single day. And I want to encourage you, go get this series for yourself so you can build your faith so that you can begin to walk by the Spirit of God and hearing the voice of God clearly. What you can do is go to allenbagministries.org and get this entire series for yourself. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us on Wisdom for Life. My name is Joshua Bag, and remember, Jesus is Lord and life is a choice. Choose life. We invite you to visit us online at allenbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allen Bag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Alan Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Alan Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Alan Bag on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Allen Bag Ministries website, so you too can be part of our E family that also participate over weekends and on special occasions. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.